What you staring at, smooth skin? We aren't saying this, the ghoul is. Are you a fan of the Fallout gaming franchise? Or have you just binge watched the new Fallout series? Well, either way, you've come to the right place, because in today's video, we introduce you to one of the main characters of the show, the ghoul. The new Amazon Prime show is an adaptation of the Fallout games, and draws heavily from the source material, with the ghouls being one such element. In the games, the ghouls are non-playable, grotesque beings who are to be killed off by the players, but their stature has been elevated in the series, mainly through the character of the ghoul. This antagonist is one of the most fleshed out characters on the show, and steals much of the limelight with witty one-liners, cowboy eccentricities, and tragic backstory. So let's get to know this lasso-throwing, gun-wielding mutant zombie a little bit better. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who is the ghoul in the Fallout show? The ghoul is what has become of showbiz superstar Cooper Howard two centuries after the Great War. In the pre-war era, Cooper served in the Marine Corps before he became a Hollywood sensation. His wife, Barb Howard, was an influential executive of the company vault Tech that built famous bunkers. Upon his wife's request, Cooper went on to feature in vault Tech adverts, with his signature style of posing with the thumbs up becoming a mascot for vault Tech in the years that followed. Yes, we're talking about Vault Boy, the cartoon mascot that frequently features in gaming lore. Through the introduction of Cooper Howard, the Fallout series finally assigned a real-life identity and backstory to vault Boy's origin. Origins. Through his association with vault Tech, Cooper Howard learned of the company's sinister motives, and began disliking his wife for being part of it all. Before the war, he left the vault Tech gig, got separated from his wife, and earned a living by performing at kids' birthday parties. Now fans of the franchise know that the nuclear holocaust is central to the Fallout lore. In 2077, a nuclear battle obliterated almost all of America, with some securing a place inside the underground vaults, while others were left on the surface to die, or worse, irradiated. Before the war, Cooper Howard was the star of stage and screen, and lived a celebrity life on the lavish California hills. When viewers met him 219 years later, Cooper is trapped inside a coffin with serum pouches attached to his body. Cooper is now a ghoul, which in gaming lore refers to mutated beings who have been poisoned by radioactivity. The ghouls are the zombies of the Fallout universe, who can live on for years and are very hard to kill. In the post-war era, Cooper, aka the ghoul, became a deadly bounty hunter, the best in town in fact, who operated with the lasso-throwing skills he'd learned while playing a cowboy character in Hollywood. Somewhere along the way, the ghoul crossed paths with a kingpin named Don Pedro, who kept him in a coffin for years, and only used to dig him out every now and then to siphon off his body parts. After the ghoul was accidentally freed by a trio of bumbling thugs, he set his eyes on Dr. Wildzig, a scientist who fled the Enclave with a sample of world-saving supertech. On his bounty hunt, the ghoul encounters the protagonist of the show, Lucy McLean, and is extremely unkind to her, chopping off her finger and using her as bait to lure a water monster. Finally, it's revealed that both Lucy and the ghoul were looking for the same person, Hank McLean, who's Lucy's dad and the ghoul's pre-war acquaintance. Hank turns out to be the actual villain of the show and manages to escape in the final episode, prompting an unlikely friendship between the ghoul and Lucy, who must track down Hank in the next season. How did Cooper Howard become a ghoul? While this is not explicitly explained in the show, one can surmise that exposure to radiation from the nuclear holocaust in 2077 caused Cooper to turn into a ghoul. Fallout's opening sequence shows the nuclear bombings of the Great War, and Cooper was one of the characters who unfortunately witnessed it up close and personal. Cooper was at a birthday party in California, where the festivities were marred by talks of an impending nuclear war. When Cooper refused to pose with his signature thumbs up with the kids, his little daughter asked for an explanation. Cooper revealed that during his days in the Marines, they were told to measure a detonation cloud with the thumb. If the cloud appeared smaller than the thumb, they would run for cover. If bigger, there was no point in running. Minutes after this conversation with his daughter, Cooper witnessed a cloud of nuclear detonation towering in front of his very eyes, signifying that the bombings have begun. In fact, the impact wave of the bombings hit him directly, shattering the glass wall behind him. The scene ended with Cooper riding his horse through the winding California roads, taking his daughter to safety. While Cooper's wife Barb had access to a premium vault because of her position at vault Tech, it was highly unlikely that Cooper received a spot in the vaults, given that they were separated. This means Cooper remained on the surface, and his proximity to Ground Zero, followed by continuous exposure to the radiation, is what caused his ghoulish transformation.
What does the ghoul look like? Just like the ghouls from the Fallout games, Cooper's physiology too was gravely affected by the radiation. When we first meet him, the ghoul has patchy, wrinkly skin and a skeletal appearance, making him look like an unkind cross between Vecna from Stranger Things and the Ghost Rider. In the post-war era, the cowboy hat and a dry sense of humor are the only elements that tie the ghoul to his former Cooper Howard identity. As a bounty hunter and expert marksman, the ghoul carries an ammo belt around his shoulder and is never without his gun and knife. Every now and then, the ghoul fishes out his lasso to strangle his enemies. In the games, ghouls are described as post-necrotic humans, who adapted to radioactive poisoning instead of dying. This immunity to radiation caused their bodies to mutate and increase their lifespan, which is more of a curse than a boon. As an after-effect of the adaptation, the ghouls develop necrosis of the skin, which causes body tissues to die and decay, and that's what gives their skin the rotten flesh-like appearance. And somewhere along the way, the ghouls seem to lose their noses, putting a creepy triangle-shaped gap in the middle of Cooper's face. In the game lore, because of their ghostly appearance, the ghouls are treated as outcasts on the surface, forcing them to become drug addicts and form settlements of their own. What is it about California that we all care? How is Howard Cooper different from the game's ghouls? The Fallout series introduced significant changes in the ghouls' characteristics, which are displayed mostly through Cooper Howard. In the games, the ghouls are primarily present to be killed off by the player, but in the series, Cooper is not just another mindless zombie, but one that fully retains his intelligence, memories, and humor. Basically, his former personality, but with a dark twist. Furthermore, in the games, there's no turning back for the ghouls that go feral, but the ghouls in the Fallout series have the ability to stop themselves from losing their minds by inhaling an anti-feral serum. Throughout the show, Cooper ensures that he never runs out of these vials of inhalants, and on the one occasion that he does, he drops to the ground wheezing. The game lore indeed has some rather interesting ghouls who interact with the players, but Cooper Howard is the first time that fans of the franchise get to experience the wasteland from a ghoul's perspective. Except this new model. Exploring the ghoul's unnatural abilities. Immune to radiation. Mutated by radiation, the ghoul is immune to radioactivity, being able to drink radiation-rich water while the same water gives Lucy radiation sickness and causes her to throw up. The ghoul is able to not just survive on the radiation-infected surface, but also deep within the radiation-rich soil. All he needs is a continuous supply of the yellow serum to prevent him from going nuts. Resistance to regular drugs. The ghoul may be resistant to any other drug that an average wastelander or vault dweller is affected by. We say this because when when Lucy fired a tranquilizer shot at the ghoul, he simply plucked it out and said, that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. This was the ghoul's way of saying that his system is loaded with the inhalant drug that keeps him from going feral. Interestingly enough, it could also be a reference to the ghoul John Hancock from the game Fallout 4, who was addicted to drugs, which ultimately resulted in his ghoulish transformation. Enhanced Lifespan Once a person becomes a ghoul, they can live on for centuries, owing to their increased lifespan. Same with Cooper, who has been around since before the Great War, which started in 2077. The events of Fallout take place in the year 2296, which means Cooper has lived as a ghoul for over 200 years already. However, to sustain those many years on the wasteland, Cooper had to ensure that he stayed in form by continually inhaling the mysterious serum that works as an elixir for ghouls. The age factor is further enhanced by the ghoul's miraculous ability to regenerate. Radioreactive Regenerative Ability The first episode reveals that while Cooper was kept locked in the coffin, Don Pedro used to cut off flesh or body parts from Cooper once every year. But when Cooper came out of the coffin, he seemed to be in great shape, suggesting he had undergone some sort of healing. During a bloody exchange with Lucy, she bit off Cooper's finger, and in retaliation, he chopped off her index finger. Afterwards, Cooper stitched up Lucy's severed finger on his index, like a perfectly matched puzzle, and it seemed to work just fine for him. This suggests that a ghoul's body is able to regenerate from radiation, but not to the extent of growing entire fingers, arms, or legs. When an external body part is reattached, the regenerative ability enables flesh strands to join back. In the games, it was mentioned that the ghoul's skin naturally peels off, but the ambient radiation activates their regenerative ability, resulting in a scar tissue-like layer of skin. In the show, when the Brotherhood Squire Thaddeus turned into a ghoul, his mashed up foot healed within seconds. The arrow wounds on his neck also got sealed up in a jiffy, exhibiting the regenerative ability of ghouls. Can reattach body parts. As was seen in the case with the finger, the ghoul can replace a missing body part with another one. In fact, in the spin-off game Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, the missions centered around Harold the Ghoul were all about getting his missing limbs back so that he could reconnect them. The ghoulification has affected his psyche, while Cooper was a sprightly, optimistic chap 
up in the pre-war era, his ghoul persona is pretty dark and ruthless, which enables him to operate as a violent bounty hunter. Centuries of isolation on the wasteland and fending off prey take a toll on the psyches of the ghouls. Cooper showed his dark side on various occasions, such as mercilessly killing a young boy after extracting information from him and torturing Lucy by keeping her thirsty. The only reason Cooper kept Lucy alive was to sell off her organs in exchange for serum vials. What makes the ghouls turn feral? The show suggests that the ghouls are destined to go feral during their lives, and it's only a matter of time before they lose their minds. In the Fallout games, the ghouls are ticking time bombs, as all ghouls eventually turn predatory, and there's no other alternative to it. Once a ghoul turns feral, it's equivalent to a mindless zombie with an unquenchable thirst for blood and flesh. Getting ostracized from society and the trauma of mutation causes the ghouls to eventually lose their mind. In the fourth episode, Cooper encounters a fellow ghoul, Roger, who has started to show signs of turning. He desperately asks Cooper for a vial of the elixir, while struggling to restrain himself from attacking Lucy. Being a ghoul himself, Cooper very well understands how dangerous a feral ghoul is, and shoots Roger in the face. In the finale episode, we meet a murdering ghoul who turns out to be Lucy's mom, Rose. She remained tied to a chair and let out raspy shrieks, which suggested that even if she was not completely feral, she had somewhat lost her mind. While Cooper lived on for 200 years, all thanks to the yellow serum, Rose's degeneration happened within a span of 15 years. How has the ghoul stopped himself from going feral? While begging for the serum, Roger tells Cooper, You've outlasted us all, confirming that Cooper is one of the very first ghouls created by the nuclear holocaust. Cooper has been wastelanding for centuries, a feat he achieved through a smart survival strategy. Cooper put his marine training and cowboy skills from the pre-war era to use, and became the most dreaded and sought-after bounty hunter in the wasteland. I've always been good at making money, said Cooper, which means he could always afford the elixir vials to prevent his ghoulish health from deteriorating. Cooper seems to be in fine condition as a ghoul, whereas Roger has chunks of his flesh missing from his face and has a decaying appearance. What's worse is that having run out of serum, Roger is also evidently losing his mind. So essentially, the ghoul stopped himself from going feral by staying rich and being able to afford a steady dose of the yellow drug. The serum has not only retained his health, but also prevented his mind from becoming corrupt from the years of radiation. When Lucy accidentally breaks his serum vials during a scuffle with a gulper, the ghoul gets furious and decides to exchange Lucy's organs to restock the serum from local dealers. The the ghoul breathes a sigh of relief when he chances upon a box full of vials inside the Super Duper Mart, which means he can take it easy for a while, as his immediate future seems secure. Can't I? So what is the yellow serum? In episode 3, the ghoul is seen wheezing and coughing when the effects of the yellow drug wear off, prompting him to plug another vial into his inhaler and take a puff. He instantly appears rejuvenated, ready to take on a new adventure across the wasteland. In the next episode, with his vials destroyed, the ghoul shows signs of worsening health and labored breathing and constant coughing, soon after which he crashes to the ground outside the Super Duper Mart. It was only after Lucy got him a handful of those vials that the ghoul was able to get back on his feet. These instances mean that the yellow serum is some sort of rejuvenating chemical that instantly energizes the ghoul, stabilizes his health stats, and keeps him steady for a day or two. The ghoul's obsession with the chemical may seem like an addiction like John Hancock's, but in the wasteland reality, the drug doubles as a drink of survival. While the series has not explained the true nature of the medicine, it can be theorized that any of the ambitious organizations from the Fallout setup who have a knack for inhuman creepy experiments may have whipped up the mysterious drug in their labs. This chemical eventually made it to the surface and continues to be trafficked illegally. Is the ghoul a cannibal? After shooting out Roger's brains in an abandoned wasteland clinic, the ghoul proceeds to cut him open with his knife and munch on a piece of his flesh. When Lucy looks on in horror, the ghoul explains, It ain't all canned peaches and marmalade left up here, sweetheart. Sometimes a fella's gotta eat a fella. This is evidence enough that the ghoul resorts to eating human flesh in dire situations. But that doesn't mean he's forgotten the taste of apple pies and ice cream. The ghoul fondly remembers pre-war food, as he was later seen enjoying a proper meal at a miner's house. It's the harsh wasteland ways that make the ghoul occasionally engage in cannibalism for his survival. However, the feral ghouls show no such judgment, and are happy to rip out their victims while preying on on them. Inside the Super Duper Mart, the feral ghouls instantly bit off a portion of an attendant's face within a matter of seconds. Can humans not exposed to radiation still be transformed into ghouls? 
When it comes to serums, not many know the difference between the noxious and the benign, says the crazy potions master, whose elixir healed the brotherhood squire Thaddeus' mangled foot. As a bonus, it also turned Thaddeus into a ghoul with insane regenerative abilities, thus proving that in the Fallout world, one can become a ghoul by taking this mysterious serum, locked up in the self-proclaimed doctor's box. For fans of the Fallout games, this is reminiscent of the experimental radioactive drug that transformed John Hancock into a ghoul. The pre-war ghouls from the Fallout games intentionally started started the process of ghoulification to survive the impending nuclear war. One such example is Desmond the Ghoul, who took controlled doses of radiation in order to become a ghoul by the year 2077. Thus, in the overall Fallout lore, it's possible to become a ghoul through the mysterious serum or regulated radiation doses. Is the ghoul immortal? One can say that the ghoul is near immortal, given how long he survived on the radiation-rich wasteland. But immortality is not a trait of the radiation-centric biology of the ghouls. As we discussed before, Cooper Howard has managed to live a longer life than his contemporaries simply by loading up on the yellow serum. When the ghoul runs out of serum, he's incapacitated within minutes, which explains how helpless the ghoul is without the drug. This also points to the fact that the ghoul may be immune to injuries and blessed with a long life, but he's always at the mercy of these serums. Thus, the ghoul does not have the ability to live forever, but has the tenacity to carry on for centuries. An encounter with the corrupt wasteland president reveals that the ghoul's agenda for staying alive for so long is to track down a woman, who most likely seems to be his wife, Barb. The ghoul has a long score to settle with Barb and get closure on what really happened to his family after the nuclear holocaust. How to Kill a Ghoul Feral ghouls are rather detrimental to a mission, both in the games and on the wasteland. Thus, it's imperative that an explorer such as Lucy acquire the skill to kill the ghouls. And there's no better way to learn this than from the ghoul himself. He killed Roger by shooting him in the head and blasting out his brains. So it seems the only way to finish a ghoul off once and for all is to destroy its head. We've seen this theory checked out on several occasions. Back at the Super Duper Mart, the human attendants managed to kill the feral ghouls by shooting them in the head. Lucy was a quick learner, and in the finale episode, she used the same method to blow up the raspy ghoul that once used to be her mother. Marvelous Verdict The Fallout series pleasantly surprises fans by expanding on the lore of the ghouls and by giving them agency. It's pretty awesome to witness, not just how ghouls are made, but also how they manage to stay sane on the wasteland. In addition to all his freakish abilities, the ghoul especially gets brownie points for his snarky repartee, which is an effective weapon in itself. He instantly offended the mobsters who woke him up from his grave, calling them an Amish production of the Count of Monte Cristo, and freaking out Lucy by describing their finger chopping session as a fair exchange. So folks, how much would you rate the ghoul character on a scale of 1 to 10 vials. It'll be fun to know your perspective, so don't hesitate to type away in the comment section below. We're signing off for now, but stay tuned for more Fallout-related content coming soon. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!